Well, let me say on the front end of this one, Jeff, uh, we do want to apologize to anybody listening because we do have a new microphone in the Goodman house today. And he said right before we clicked record, it's not horrible, but it's not great, which I think could be indicative of how Caleb Love ends up looking for Michigan. Jeff, what do you think of that? Yeah, that's that's probably truth. I mean, with Caleb Love, you just don't know what you're going to get. I mean, again, a year and a half ago, he was terrific in 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 the the, the win against uh, Duke in the Final Four, and then he was horrible in the next game, in the championship game against Kansas. And that kind of describes Caleb Love's career. You just don't know what you're going to get. What did Forrest Gump say? You know, it's like a box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get. That that's Caleb Love. <laughs> it is Caleb Love. Um, I think the the hard part with me with Caleb. And- and I'll, I guess I'll just say this on the front end. I did not want this to happen when the rumor came out that there was a chance Caleb Love was going to end up at Michigan. I was very loudly against it. I My take essentially was this. Look, if you feel your roster's in a spot where you need Caleb Love to come in and be the do-everything guy, at least wait until June. And if it's June and you can't find a better option, then fine. But if this was rumored to be Michigan or Missouri, and that might be it, I would have been okay with allowing him to go to Missouri or at least slow balling it before two weeks into the off season. I mean, you're essentially betting your whole season on this guy, right? There's no way around it. When you bring Caleb love in to be a high usage option on your team, your team goes as Caleb love goes. Yeah. I mean, listen, they need talent, right? They need talent. Caleb love does have talent. You you can't deny that. Um, so I, I think it was a risk that Michigan probably felt like they had to take. At this point, and again, listen, we can put a lot of blame on Caleb Love last year, but it wasn't just him um, that contributed to the 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 terrible year that Carolina had. Um, you know, I think we've talked about it. Hubert Davis needed to rein Caleb Love in, needed to rein him in. It was like watching a kid play AAU ball last year. Most of the time with Caleb Love, you know, he was taking terrible shots selection terrible contested shots that should not have been taken and he wasn't guarding and to me you needed to nip it in the bud early and sit his ass down and play Seth Trimble more and just say you know what we're not we can lose with you doing this stuff or we can lose without you it doesn't matter we're losing so we're going to try to get you where you're playing the right way and again not just on Caleb Love I think Hubert Davis Deserves some blame. I think there's other players at Carolina that deserve some blame. But again, Caleb Love can be very, very difficult to watch at times because it looks like you're, I'm watching a kid playing AU ball. Right. Yeah, it's uh, it's each their own, right? It's a different flavor. Some people love Caleb Love's brand of basketball, just aesthetically. What does it look like? Step back jumpers, right? Uh, it's exciting. When he gets going... He's one of the most fun players to watch in the country. The problem is, in my opinion, it's very rare that he gets going for an entire game. He might have a moment in the first half that's exciting, but it still comes on a very inefficient game. And to that point, Jeff, like people point to that stretch at the end of his sophomore year when they made the run in March as, oh, well, that's what good Caleb Love looks like. I pulled some numbers on this, Jeff, because we were there, right? We were watching these games. I'm like, I never, he hit the big shot against Duke. He had big moments, but I never felt like he was anything different from what he normally was. In that run, from conference tournament play through the run to the national championship game, eight games, they went six and two in those eight games. He shot 33% from the floor in those eight games. Like, he did not turn a corner. This is the same inefficient guy he always was. The team somehow was winning those games, but it wasn't like we had a different Caleb Love in that moment. Um, And then obviously you mentioned the national title game, right? Like he was bad in the second half. He was three for 16 from the floor in a game they led by 15. at Like that's not bad. That's catastrophic levels of bad. Well, this year and even more, Greg, even more this year, he couldn't make threes. Uh, What is shooting the high 20s from three? This year? Yeah, I think 29, 29. Yeah, I mean, again, shot under 40 from the field overall. You know, high 20s from three. Didn't really guard. But again, when you are are desperate, which Juwan Howard and Michigan are desperate right now, you know, there were a lot of teams that told me they were not going to move on Caleb Love. They didn't call on him. They weren't going to move on him because 
again, I think on one hand, you bring them in if you're Michigan because you need a dude that can just score and you're going to probably give him the ball and give him free reign again. That's the worst thing for him. Like Caleb Love really needs to go somewhere that he's going to be held accountable and not given free reign and being a piece and being, again, benched when he takes some of those shots and learn how to play within a system. Um, he didn't do that this year at Carolina. Right. No, he did not. Um, I think that is the fascinating part to me about him landing at Michigan, right, is on one hand, uh, look, I'm a Michigan fan. I can say this. I, I don't trust this staff at all to solve the problem where here's a super talented player yeah. who is problematic either in decision making on the court or in decision making off the court. And from what we know about Caleb Love, both might be true. But like, yeah. look at this past season for Michigan. The story of their season was that he couldn't get his own son, who was talented as hell, to Forget buy it. in defensively yeah. or on the rebounds on the court. And he couldn't get Hunter Dickinson to buy in in the locker room or off the court. So one of the most talented teams in college basketball season totally went a, yeah. a, a awry, right? Because of that. And now here we are where instead of having three guys you feel really good about right now, that team has one next year and it's Caleb love. So it's just an all or nothing bet, which, like I said, if that's coming at the end of the off season, that's one thing. If it's coming this early, like uh, I don't think it's exaggeration, Jeff, to say like Juwan Howard might be betting his Michigan career on Caleb love. Yeah. I mean, listen, if, if you have another year where you don't make the NCAA tournament, this thing flipped quickly, right? I mean, there were, there were, a, a, a game away from going to the final four in his second year. And I even admitted, you know, again, it's one of those things where you have to admit at that point, right? You're wrong. Right. I admitted I'm wrong. Well, I, I admitted about Mark Adams. I was wrong, you know, a year ago when he did a good job and got Texas tech uh, going again and picked up after Chris Beard. But, you know, sometimes again, you got to look at it long-term. Now, Juwan Howard inherited a culture and some pretty good players from John Beeline, right? I mean, we can agree yeah. on that, right? Yes, 100%. So it's hard sometimes. Mark Adams inherited a culture and players from, obviously, Chris Beard. Now, he helped not recruit, but he helped coach uh, that program when Beard was there. I, I just think sometimes we need to look at longevity a little bit. You know, Mike Woodson, another example at Indiana. I don't want to evaluate Mike Woodson off last year or this year. I want to evaluate him after year four or five because that's when, again, you've had to recruit your own guys. You know, you, 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 you've, you like Woodson, inherited Trace Jackson. He did a hell of a job developing Trace, obviously. But look at their roster right now. You know, they've got to obviously uh, get some guards and and – Michigan right now looks like it's a program that's a shell of itself, whether it's the fact that we can we can look at Juwan Howard's coaching, whether it's we can look at maybe they don't have the NIL. But but I still say, listen, if you're an NBA, he got some pretty good players in. Let, let's it wasn't for a lack of talent that they weren't in the NCAA tournament this past year. Jet Howard's gonna be a first rounder. Hunter Dickinson's one of the best players in, in the country. Kobe Bufkin might be a first rounder. You might have had two first rounders and a, an all American ish type big man on your roster. That's enough to get to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, one hundred percent it is. And I, I think everyone will always look back on last season, especially if it doesn't turn around for his trajectory going forward. Like that was the jumping off point. Was yeah. that was a really good team on paper? It never fully connected, and I don't think we'll know. I've said this throughout the year. I don't think we will know what the main cause of last season was until a year or two down the line. Like you could convince me that Hunter Dickinson was just such a toxic person to have around that room. I don't want to shit on the kid too much. Yeah, I, I like Hunter. I don't believe that. I don't believe don't? that. Cause I still think he, he's a kid who plays hard in the court. He was their best player. So it wasn't like people were looking at him and being like, Hey, he got paid when he shouldn't have. He had already proven it. Right. Right. No, you're right. And the production was there to back it up. Hunter played fantastic through the course of the season. He didn't have but a point I do guard. Think they were... didn't really have a point guard. Doug was was pretty good, you know, the last third of the season. But yeah, 
But but you know, listen, having said that, they had enough to get in the tournament. Again, I'll, I'll keep going back right. to that. They had plenty of talent to get to the NCAA tournament. Right. So here's – if I'm playing devil's advocate with myself here, because, again, I'm very skeptical of how this is going to work. Sure. The one thing that gives me hope is that Howard Isley, the assistant coach for Michigan who runs the backcourt, yeah. has done a really, really phenomenal job with development of the guys that he has worked with since he came in with Juwan. I'm talking going back to the, the first group. He was really with Eli Brooks and with Franz Wagner. And Franz ended up a pro, but Franz yep. was not a lottery pick when he walked through those doors. Eli Brooks had never played significant minutes, even under John Beeline. And he was a Beeline guy. But to get two really productive years of Eli Brooks that they did, I think Isley deserves a lot of credit. Then you turn the page forward. Kobe Bufkin went from a guy who wasn't in the rotation to a, a lock first round yep. pick. Yep. I think Caleb Love's work with Howard Isley will be very interesting to watch because there is a talent within Caleb Love, clearly, where I don't know if it's just eliminating the shot selection stuff. I don't know what it is. And this team's going to need him to take a lot of shots. We know that. Yeah. But I am optimistic that Howard Isley could get him on the right track to where he is an NBA player. Is that crazy to think about a year from now? I love Osley. I love Osley. I've known him since he was at Boston College as a, as a player. So I think that was a great hire. And I, you know, I look at their staff and I, I still like it because it, the three of them are very different. Obviously, you got Martelli as the older dude who can coach. You know, Osley is the NBA guy, and, and Saudi Washington is the recruiter who already had Michigan and Midwest ties. So I kind of like those guys. Um, you just got to bring more around Caleb Love, like. I don't know, again, what they have in NIL right now left. 